So we made it to Kelowna, met with AJ. He's gonna put a scuba on. I'm gonna free dive like normal. And uh, we're gonna go to the waterfront park over here and uh, see what kind of stuff we can find. I'll we'll pull out a bit of trash, but I'm hoping we get some cool finds. So uh, stay tuned for what we get. All right, so we're gonna free dive in. We'll just scuba dive in. Gonna meet back to the surface, see who gets what. One of my favorite things about free diving compared to scuba diving is I can just kind of mess with scuba divers. I'm silent, I'm fast, way faster than you can be on scuba. So I can just come up to you and kind of mess with you a little bit. And you can never have too many frisbees, right? Like I always say though, if for every cool thing you find, you gotta pull out the trash too. You can't just pick up the treasures. Alright, haul from the first Kelowna dive. Four pairs of shades, fin, three paddles, a pile of trash, and a frisbee. It's not bad, really wasn't sure we expected. But uh, yeah, a little bit of trash, a few paddles out of the water. Not too bad. Uh, it's pretty late now, so we're gonna get an early start tomorrow and try to hit up a bunch of spots. So uh, yeah, we'll see what we get there. Um, yeah, see you guys in the morning. Alright, good morning. So nice and early. We're here at uh, one of the boat launches, beating all the boats, and uh, see if we can find a bunch of stuff here. This is three docks at this one, so there should be a ton of stuff here. Pretty excited. Um, I don't think anyone dives these too much. Not very often, no, except for so, over there. I already see trash. So hopefully uh, get a bunch of cool stuff. <laughs> Alright, let's jump in. Right away, I knew this spot was going to have a ton of stuff. We pulled out quite a few cans, and there was so many more, but we had to do this really quick because there was a lot of boats that kept coming in, and I didn't want to get in the way or get hit by a boat. I think AJ is going to come back here and do more thorough trash clean and probably find a few more phones as well. Like I said, we did this spot pretty quick. <laughs> if you listen in this next clip, you can actually hear the boat motors in the water. It's kind of unnerving when you're underwater and you can't tell the direction they're coming from and you just look up and hopefully it's not above you. That's like a uh, like a debit card thing or something. Huh. I thought it was. That's what it looked like, but I don't think that's the phone. No, it doesn't look like it.
what do you think this is? I have absolutely no idea myself. So this is what I would call throwing distance. Somebody probably dropped it and then fish and just hucked it. it off of there. So this is what I call throwing distance. <laughs> Do a nice little dive. So uh, come check out what we got here. As always, got a bit of trash, a shoe, nothing fancy here. He found a brand new anchor. So that was pretty sick. <laughs> Look at this. It's got three phones, and I think it's like a debit machine or something. I think. Nice pair of shades. <clears throat> and you don't see these very often. So uh, this one is actually over top of that one, but Grand Canyon, it's pretty cool. <coughs> and then uh, some sort of step, I don't know why that's in the water. <coughs> Overall, pretty good little dive. So, we're gonna head to the third spot now. Today is gonna be uh, two or three more dives, so let's we'll see what else we can get. <laughs> It's like 25 feet deep here. <laughs> so we're, we're finishing up that boat launch. Uh, a guy came up to us and said he works at a marina over here, a rental area, and uh, buddy dropped a longboard. So I found that, and uh, AJ's looking for his phone right now. Sick, you got it. <laughs> it was literally sitting right on the surface. I fell on it. She got the phone too. That phone is not gonna work. <laughs> we'll see. This is probably one of those random things in my trip here. We were just walking along the uh, lake here and I just seen this in the water. So of course I had to pull it out. We were really wondering who brings their barbell to the beach to work out and then leaves it behind. Like, so weird. Well, that was pretty random. <laughs> I'm flown without saying hi to the Ogopogo. So I've never really spent much time in Kelowna until now, and these things are everywhere. These are little electric scooters that you can rent. Like you see people riding them everywhere. They're just left by parks, um, street corners. Like they are all over the place. So I thought I was gonna find a lot more of these, but we only found the one here. And these things are actually incredibly hard to swim with. They're much heavier than they look, and underwater, I swear they're twice as heavy as they are on land. As you can see here, AJ was swimming up, holding his thing with as much force as he could muster. I went up, grabbed the rope that we had found right beside this, and attached the handle real quick. And then we both swam up, and I was actually able to grab the dock, and just get this thing out of the weeds. Swimming in the weeds was also making this really challenging, and the weight of this underwater is so heavy. But we ended up getting out to the shallows, and uh, onto the sand away from the weeds.
said you got all your scooters. The guy's longboard that we got is actually the uh, guy in the boat there. Oh, they're gonna get him wet! <laughs> we just got uh, done in the last spot. Yeah, not bad at all. Two pairs of glasses. Car key. I recently had to get a new one. Those are expensive. That sucks. Actually, I think that's a car key. Maybe not a car key, this little house, I'm not sure what this is. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's the highlight of the dive. Nice big uh, electric scooter. I don't think we can keep it though. <laughs> I'll put it in the back of the escape, you know? Yeah, good little dive. I think this might be the last stop of the day. Yeah, I hit like three or four spots, so it's pretty sick. Yeah. Did you guys found all that stuff? Yeah. yeah, this is at the end of the dock, dude. That one? Yeah. Oh it was in the water. Shortly after this dive, me and AJ went head lunch, and then I decided to actually head home. I kind of wanted to sleep in my own bed. Big thanks to AJ for uh, putting me up for the night, though. That was super awesome. So I decided to head to Kentucky Eileen Lake on the way home. I had seen some videos on TikTok about it, and I really wanted to check it out. So here it is. I think this might be a prime example of stuff you see on the internet not being 100% accurate. So yes, this lake looks absolutely beautiful from land. Um, paddle boarding, kayaking, gorgeous little lake. However, diving here, it really isn't that great. Um, for me, finding stuff, the bottom's extremely soft. You can't touch it without having a huge cloud of silt. And as soon as you get like 20 feet down, it's really bad visibility actually. The visibility just goes downhill fast, I don't know what to say. Um, but pretty late to dive nonetheless. If you have any plans of coming here to dive, I wouldn't really recommend it honestly. But paddleboard, kayak, go for it. Absolutely gorgeous. But I did have fun floating around like this. Does this make anyone else dizzy? So just got the Kentucky Eileen Lake. You can see how nice and beautiful it is over there. Um, <laughs> the water is gorgeous, actually. Hey, you can actually see a deer down there. If I can zoom in. Yeah, a little deer right there. Not the clearest, but. Anyways, like I was saying, I just got done uh, with Kentucky Lake here. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, unfortunately, like once you get down like 25, 30 feet, it's uh, pretty murky. So that <laughs> brilliant green, bluey on top. Um, yeah, it doesn't continue down, but it's gorgeous little dive. Pull out a couple cans or bottles, I guess, and uh, paddle in a chair. That's about all I got. But gorgeous little dive. I guess so. Home from Kelowna now. Uh, it was a, just a short couple day little trip, and after Kentucky Lake, I just headed right home. So two of the phones that I got there, um, one was the Samsung, and the other one was I think an iPhone 12. I sent the iPhone off to the phone repair guru. He's gonna try and do a video and fix it up and turn return to the owner. This one's totally pooched. Um, it's not gonna work. I'm probably still gonna try and contact the owner. It's just kind of a cool story to get your phone back, but uh, you can see a lot of damage on this one. It's not gonna be turning on anytime soon. And my next few videos, I have a pile of phones, but I'm gonna be away for the next week. So you're gonna have to wait to see these ones. Um, this iPhone 12 or 13, honestly, I don't know how to tell the difference between half these things. <laughs> I've never been an iPhone guy, but uh, we'll try and get this one back to the owner too. I'm pretty sure this one will work. And uh, yeah, don't have good hopes for these ones though. The older iPhone and uh, all the Samsungs and Androids, they just don't really hold up in the water very well. And some of these look like they had been down there for quite a while. But yeah, next couple of videos, like I said, we'll try to return all these phones. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.